Hey guys, May here, and welcome to episode 4 of K-Pop Comeback Updates. Um, again, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, there were a few people I missed last week, but I have three pages this week, plus an extra page for one of the things I'm going to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with the last, one of the last things I talked about last week, B1A4. They released their music video for their third mini album, In the Wind, and the music video for Tried to Walk was released. It's not a big dance song. I've, I've actually watched their performance on M Countdown, and they don't do a lot of dancing in that song, but the music video has a hint of a story, just a hint. I absolutely love everyone's new hair. It's so good, and Shinwoo without glasses is like, it's so good, he looks so cute. So all the sets are really detailed and really nice. They're amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, there's not a lot of Shinwoo and not a lot of Gongchan in this music video. I bought this album actually, which is exciting. When it came out, I watched the music video and I was like, this is pretty nice. And then I, wa I was like, oh, let's listen to the rest of the album. So I did, and I absolutely love this album. This album is amazing. Yeah, so if you haven't seen the music video already, go ahead and check it out. I'll do a little teaser right now. <laughs> Next we have Son Danbi, and um, I didn't I didn't talk about this last week, it's one of the people I should have talked about, but I didn't. She came back with her fourth mini album titled Dripping Tears, which is the title track, Dripping Tears, it's the same name. There are five songs on this album, and there's also a remix of Dripping Tears, which they're calling a G remix. Um, it is her first time releasing an album in almost two years. The music video is out for this. It starts off seeming like a kind of sad, slow ballad song, but it actually turns into like a ballad dance track. It's kind of abrupt and random, but it does keep you engaged and it includes insane asylums, alien backup dancers, her ruining a party by pulling the light down, getting drowned in a bathtub, and um, yeah, like it's really random, but it's really great, so you should go ahead and check it out. And I love the hair flipping dance the uh, in the chorus. I can't do it because my hair's up today, but the hair flipping dance. Go check out Son Dambi's Dripping Tears, and there's a teaser coming up next. Next is um, LED Apple. It's another group I should have talked about last week, but I never ended up doing it because I didn't know about this comeback. So I believe this is a digital single album. Um, I love the whole concept of this music video. I thought they were zombies at first when I first started watching it. They're all kind of like heads down, kind of swaying arms back and forth, kind of dead looking. But they actually end up being robots. And I love the special effects in this music video. Their faces like shimmer, like they're supposed to be robots. And the song is really good as well. Yeah, it's a pretty dark song, but it's also really cool. Um, go ahead and check it out if you haven't already, and here's a little teaser right now. Next we have Sea Clown, who are a 2012 rookie group. It's their second mini album titled Young Love, and there are seven tracks on this album, which might seem like a lot, but let me tell you what the songs are like. So there's three songs. Far Away, Young Love, which is the title track, Good Night, and Cold, which I talked about last week and I thought it was the title track, but I wasn't really sure. Like, there's instrumentals of all three songs and acoustic version of Far Away, Young Love. So, it's not really seven songs, it's three songs. Let me talk about the music video now. I forgot to put their teasers on my last week episode. I watched the music video the other day, and the first thing I noticed was the music video was seven minutes long, and I was like, there's a storyline, isn't there? And there was a storyline, and I was super excited about it. K-pop music videos have become dance scenes, close-ups of face, maybe a hint of a storyline. Like, most K-pop songs are like that now. I like it, and I dislike things about it. So let me tell you what I like about it first. Let's start off with the positives. It has a storyline. The storyline is good, and it is not predictable. It is your basic guy likes his friends, girlfriend kind of thing. There's lots of different sets. It's all really pretty. It's very visually appealing. So yeah, I, my only, only two complaints about this music video 
The lip singing uh, does not match up with the music in the chorus. Another thing is there's only one member in the entire music video. There are no dance shots at all. You don't see the other members. They're not even like the guy behind the counter at the gas station convenience store or something like that. They're not in at all, which I think is a really bad move because they are such a new group. People like me want to know, well, who are the other people in this group? How many members are there? Because I don't even know that. I think they could have cut out a couple music video scenes or like shortened them a little bit and you still would have been able to understand what was going on and put in dance scenes or face shots because there's so many debuts these days, we don't even know. Other than that, I love this song. I love the, um, haven't listened to the other two songs yet. I should, I think I'm going to. Um, love the music video. Yeah, here's a little teaser of that right now and go check out the music video after you finish watching this video. Next we have Ajax and they're coming back with their first mini album, To My Ex. Um, they've had two single albums before, they are a 2012 rookie group. There are seven songs on this album. There are two songs from their first single album, Hot Game from their second single album, and then three new songs plus an instrumental of To My Ex, which is the title track. To My Ex is supposed to be a response to Son Yesterday's Run Devil Run. Um, a lot of people are saying SNSD's song is better, but it's not supposed to be better, it's just a response, which is really cool. When I first started getting into K-pop, watched a lot of K-pop parodies. I don't know if anybody has seen Kaesung 80, I think it's Kaesung 85's um, parodies of Run Devil Run and Super Junior's It's You, because Super Junior's It's You was the response to Run Devil Run, they were like a two-part thing. I've been waiting for a response, a real response, to SNSD's Run Devil Run for the longest time. I think people don't like it because it kind of has an older K-pop sound to it. Um, it sounds like something that was released in the 90s in the um, United States. I actually did not watch on the official channel. I'm really sorry. I watched the translation first and I was like, this is so much like Run Devil Run. Like, they have the same things. So then I watched Run Devil Run with the lyrics again. I wrote down a couple of similarities. There are a lot of similarities, but I just wrote down a couple I want to talk about. So first of all, we have the chorus. In SNSD, we have, you better run, 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 run. And then um, to my ex, it starts, I'd better run, run away. Right before the chorus, there's, you're boring, you have no manners, you're a devil, you are. From SNSD's. Run Devil Run. And then in To My Ex, they say, I'm no fun, I have no manners, I'm devil, I'm devil, you gotta let it go. My favorite part from SNSD's Run Devil Run is the line, half the world is men. And in Ajax's To My Ex, they say half the world is women, so I'm glad they included that. Um, the only difference is SNSD talks a lot about getting revenge on the guy that betrayed him. Ajax just kind of wants him to go away. They're like, I played you, it's over, go away. But it is a response to SNSD's song, so don't take it too seriously, guys. So yeah, if you haven't heard To My Ex yet, you really should. There's a lot of similarities in the lyrics, and it's really cool, and I've never really seen anything like that before, so go ahead and check that out. So next we have Dal Shabe, who, like I said last week, came back with their fifth mini album, Have Don't Have. Um, they released two music videos for this title track, Have Don't Have. They're calling them the Have version and the Don't Have version. The Don't Have version takes place in a Korean um, marketplace with a bunch of random ajumas and ajashis just walking around being random. There's also one part when they're dancing outside, that's my favorite part of the music video, when these two ajashis walk by and they knock over a box of apples and like for the next 30 seconds, you see him in the background picking up the apples <laughs> and chasing after the apples that are rolling away. I love that part of the music video. Um, it's very funny to watch. It is definitely my favorite of the two music videos. The have version is more upbeat and it's more like flashy and kind of in your face. They walk around shooting lightning bolts at everyone, which makes them dance when they get hit with the lightning bolt. There is an an idol in here, an actor actually. His name is Yi Shunun. 
and that name might not be familiar to you, but he was in Reply 1997, and he was also in King to Hearts. In Reply 1997, he was the friend that was not Hoya, that was not um, So and Gook, and was not the guy that had the crazy girlfriend. I didn't watch King to Hearts, so I don't know what he played in that. Like I said, it was in the half version, it was flashier. It has Ishiyun running away. Um, from the girls. I don't know why. I guess he doesn't like dancing. And then towards the end, he kind of gets into it. He's like tapping his foot and he's like, yeah. He has a girlfriend for a while and then she gets hit with lightning bolts and she starts dancing and he kind of just leaves her. He's not very good with girls, is he? So yeah, go ahead and check out that music video if you haven't already. Um, I'm going to do a teaser to both of them because I think both music videos are worth checking out. They're both very different, but they're also very similar. So go ahead and check those out. Next we have Park Jungmin, and I talked about him last week as well. He released a music video for his second single album titled Beautiful. Um, it's also another random video like Son Dambi's. We have many, many sets here that are not like each other at all. We have the band hanging out in someone's bedroom set. We have the puppy red shirt Elvis hair disco set, which is personally one of my favorite sets. The standing outside the theater with your name on the thing outside the theater. If I had a dollar for every time K-pop idols use that in their music video, I would be able to buy every K-pop album that I ever wanted to buy. I'd be so rich, guys, you don't even know. At 2.35, it turns into kind of a more regular music video. There's not too many shots of him dancing. Um, there are shots of him doing like the disco and stuff. Um, but there is a white room where he dances with background dancers. The background dancers acting in this music video is actually my favorite part. I'm not a big fan of the song, not a big fan of the music video in general, but it's another like, you have to look at the background dancers because they're just so random and funny. There's like this kind of um, kind of futuristic set, which I didn't talk about, but it's like everybody moves like a robot and the background dancer is just kind of walking around. Like one guy walks across the room carrying a chair, like, like what are you doing? So if you haven't seen it already, I suggest you go check it out. Um, you might not like the song, but I think you'll get a good laugh out of watching the background dancers do random stuff in the background. So go and check that out. Next, he is back again. Third episode, he's been in my K-pop comeback updates. Not that I don't love talking about him, it's just I just keep... Willem is really dragging this out. So Kim sung Yoo is back again in K-pop comeback updates. Pre-orders for his album have been put up. Two teaser videos were released this week, which is really exciting. The first one that was released had a storyline, and it was kind of this girl kind of waiting for someone, and then somebody's hand has like water, rain dripping onto it, and then L from Infinite shows up with an umbrella. And people are thinking that the hand that reaches out is Sung Yu's hand. It kind of reminds me of the Chaser music video a bit. I was worried, is Sung Yu not even going to be in his music video for a solo mini album? Then there was another music video teaser released. I think it was yesterday it was released, and he was playing the piano, and the song he was playing was Another Me. And the song that was in the background when Elle and the girl were there with it raining was 60 Seconds, which is the title track. Willem also released a preview video of all the songs this morning because that's what Willem does, and I love Willem for that. Which is pretty much, if you don't know, SM does it sometimes too. They have 10 seconds of each track on the album play in a video that has like pictures in the background, kind of like more teaser photos. So the album sounds amazing. It sounds really, really good. It is not very infinity, besides Only Tears, which is a Sung Yu solo, is the acoustic version of Only Tears. Yeah, it'll be released on the 19th in Korea. Not sure if that's the album or the music video. I assume both will be released, but I'm not sure. Again, I'm really interested to see if there's going to be two music videos or if there's going to be one with combination of both videos from the teaser. Um, because, like, there were two different songs playing. Look forward to that. I will show you the teaser videos right now. So here you go. Next, we have 
have, um, not sure how to say her name, so please forgive me if I totally ruin it, Junia. And she is coming back. She debuted earlier this year with Ila Ila. Um, she's coming back with her second mini album, One and One. There are five songs on this album. The title track is Bad Person. Uh, a few songs like Happy Day, Boy, and Cat Day were released on our Japanese mini albums and have been translated into Korean and are going to be released on this mini album. This album will be released on the 20th in Korea and the 22nd on online music sites like Yes Asia and K-Pop Down. So yeah, there's really nothing out for that yet. Um, I don't know what to show you guys. I will see if there's a teaser video out. I don't think there is one yet. But yeah, so look forward to that. Next we have actor and singer Yu Sungi, who's coming back um, with a mini album. Not sure what it's called yet. There are five songs on the mini album. This limited edition, which is the only version you can order right now, comes with a hundred page photo essay book. Um, that includes pictures he took while traveling around Korea, which is pretty cool. Not sure what the title track is yet. Not sure a lot about this. Um, it's gonna be released on the 26th on Yes Asia. I assume that means it's gonna be released on like the 24th in Korea. I will probably talk about it more next week and I'll have more information. So go ahead and wait for that because I will get more information on that. Which is super exciting because I love Isungi. Next we have Spica. And they're coming back with their second mini album, Lonely. It has four songs, including the title track, Lonely. The teaser video was released yesterday, I want to say, and the album will be released on the 21st. This is a more mature concept than their last I'll Be There, kind of dancing random with a girl under an umbrella. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. Spica has been one of my favorite um, girl groups of 2012. So yeah, look forward to that. Here's a little teaser of the teaser. Finally, this is a long way off, but I felt it was necessary to include in this video because it is some pretty exciting news. SNSD, you know that group who hasn't released anything in like 15 months in Korea and they haven't promoted as a group at all this year? It has been confirmed that they will be coming back January of 2013. So don't expect a Korean comeback this year, guys. But next year, SNSD will be back in January. Um, they have had some pretty good releases in January. They've been well in the charts like G and O. I'm pretty sure O was in January. But yes, those have been released in January and they did really, really well on the charts. So hopefully this will be a full album because they have been gone for 15 months, which is a long time. There were no promotions in all of 2012. Um, Tay So did promote Twinkle, but that was about it. Look forward to that, So Wands, because that's coming your way. I know everybody's waiting for a Korean comeback. I don't have anything to show you for that right now, just that information, but hopefully that'll get you psyched for January. So yeah, that was um, that was it for this week's K-pop comeback updates. Again, if you have any feedback, let me know in the comments below. If you have any, um, if I missed anybody, I don't think I missed anyone this week, but if I did miss someone, go ahead and let me know. Um, this week, my question is, who is your queen of K-pop? Because a lot of people refer to Son Dambi as the queen of K-pop, but I know a lot of people consider Boa to be the queen of K-pop or Lee Hyori to be the queen of K-pop. So who is your queen of K-pop? Go ahead and let me know in the comments section below. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already for more K-pop comeback updates because I release them every week on Sunday. So yeah, bye guys.